Hey everyone, so later today I'm going to be having a Arch Linux install video come out, as requested. Um, so in this video I wanted to talk about some of the reasons that, uh, or some of the reasons to use Arch Linux. Um, I'm not going to say it's my favorite distribution, I don't have a favorite distribution, and I don't think Arch would actually be my favorite distribution if you forced me to choose. Um, but I keep coming back to it for a lot of reasons. It's not like there's one knockdown reason to use it, but there are a whole bunch of things that sort of circulate, like little, little issues that sort of mean something, that make it a really usable distribution for someone like me, and probably most of my subscribers. Um, so let's get some stuff out of the way about Arch. So if you've never used it, um, so misunderstandings, a lot of people meme about it saying it's, uh, it breaks all the time, it's unusable, you have to do everything yourself. It's not actually the case. Um, so Arch Linux, of course, does have a minimal install. Um, you do have to install it yourself. There are, all, are actually scripts for doing it, but you're expected to install it yourself. So pretty much every Arch Linux user has done that. Now, that's actually one of the reasons that I started using Arch. Um, and that's not just to make it difficult for myself. It was that whenever I used another distribution that came with a desktop environment and a bunch of other software, um, you know, I would install Ubuntu or install Manjaro or something else and you know it works fine but I'd always want to make my own setup and I started building my own setup gradually over the course of a couple weeks or months and uh, I'd be in the situation where I'd install it on Ubuntu and then I'd have to go through uninstalling all the stuff that Ubuntu installs that I'm not going to use and I don't need sometimes it gets in my way sometimes it's a little annoying so I wanted to build a setup that just does the things that I want it to do and not necessarily anything else um, and Arch is basically one of the best distributions you can do for this. Uh, the fact that it's a minimal install, that's a huge sell for me. I like that. I think it's it's very useful, um, you know, in that you can pretty much, you have to do everything yourself uh, at the beginning. Now, that's not to say it's a difficult distro to manage. It actually, it really isn't. Um, it is, of course, a rolling release distribution, meaning um, you can choose to update basically every day. There are always new packages coming out, new updates for those things. Um, a lot of people think rolling release, uh, you know, it, since Arch is a rolling release distro, it's really great to have. I don't really, I'm not, not going to say I dislike it, but I don't think I've benefited from it that much. It's nice to have relatively new software. I don't need it, you know, as soon as it comes out or something like that. But every once in a while it does matter. Um, I'll just say that's not a huge sell for me. That Some people really like Arch because it's rolling release. I'm just not a big fan of it. Uh, of course, you don't have to totally reinstall it, uh, you know, whenever Arch 5.0 or whatever comes out because, of course, Arch 5.0 doesn't exist. It's all It all happens gradually every day. Um, so, one misunderstanding that, of course, is part of the meme is that Arch breaks all the time. Uh, so you're going to sp be spending all your time, you know, fixing programs that me mess up in the last update or something like that. Now that just doesn't happen. Um, or it's happened, well, we'll put it this way. If, if you're going to use Arch Linux, you should check up on the Arch Linux website or subscribe to the to the Arch Linux RSS feed because every couple of months something will go wrong. I mean, something expected will go wrong where you have to manually change something that Pac-Man, the package manager, isn't going to do automatically. So in that situation, it's nice to keep track of what's going on on the Arch Linux website, and they'll tell you if you actually need to manually fix anything. But that only happens like maybe once or twice a year. It's relatively rare, uh, and mostly it's for like a specific program that you're not even necessarily using. Um, so that's one thing you need to keep in mind, but generally Arch Linux does not just spontaneously break. Um, or you you should put the agency where it belongs. Like if you're installing a system from the bottom up and you did it yourself, um, I, I don't want to blame the user or anything, but a lot of times it is because you might have jiggered with something in way, ways you weren't really spo were, were supposed to, or you know, uh, you didn't know how to do it the conventional way, so you did something wild or something like that and you messed up, you know, your root partition or something like that. Um, but generally, Arch Linux does just, it doesn't break. That The whole meme, I mean, it's just a meme. Um, so one thing about Arch Linux that I think is worth talking about is, is Arch a minimalist distribution? Um, and that depends on what you mean by a minimalist distribution. So Arch, as I said, it has a minimalist install. Um, but 
it's not necessarily minimalist in the sense that, uh, you know, a lot of people use the word to mean it only pulls those packages you absolutely need for dependencies. Um, and it, all, it minimizes the amount of space you're using uh, to store programs by having as few that you need as possible. Now, compare that with Void. Uh, Void Linux is a distribution that I use as well that I think is truly minimal in the sense that it only installs exactly what you tell it to and only those programs that are needed to get the basic functionality of those programs. Um, one comparison be between Arch and Void would be Void, when you, in when you want to compile a program in a particular computer language, um, you usually have to install a specific development package on Void to do that. And that can be sort of an annoyance. I mean, you really just install one package, but it doesn't just pull everything by default if you just say, I want the devel stuff. Uh, Arch Linux does work that way. You can't just say, I want all the development stuff, or um, basically all the, you get all the full functionality of each program pulled automatically when you get Arch Linux. So that's not minimalist in the sense that you're going to be using a little more hard drive space to store all these extra packages, um, but it's nice. I think in practice it's very nice unless you're just economizing on disk space or you have some ideological reason that you just want as few packages as possible. Um, Arch Linux works just fine for what it's doing. It's not minimalist in that sense, but it is minimalist in the minimalist install thing. Now, one thing, one, one other note about the minimalist install. Um, some people will say, well, okay, what's the big deal about Arch? So Arch, you have a minimal install, um, but if you want to use Debian, you could install, you can have a minimalist install in that and install everything from the bottom up, or you could use one of their desktop environments. Either one is fine. So what's the advantage of Arch there? Now, the advantage is, it's sort of a practical one. Let me put it this way. So the Arch community um, uh, is built of people who all installed Arch from the bottom up. They're all sort of working, you know, they all had the same experience. Um, and so the problem, if you have a problem that you can't figure out by looking at the manual or something, if you look a problem up uh, for, you know, some specific thing on Arch, usually you're going to run into lots and lots of people who have had the exact same problem. Uh, and that's really nice. And that's not necessarily true if you're using a minimal install of Debian or Ubuntu. Even though those distributions are hugely, hugely used, um, Arch Linux, like the, the community or the, the troubleshooting that's online is geared to the kind of stuff that you'll be interested in if you're you're looking to make a minimalist installation. Um, and so that that's really that was really convenient for me and other people as well. And I will say comparing Arch to other uh, distributions like again void Linux or uh, distributions that are less trafficked. Um, the nice thing about Arch is because it's used by a relatively large number of people, um, and this is totally arbitrary mind you. This isn't this is only a practical practical benefit, but it actually means a whole lot. Um, there is a lot of people who have their eyes on Arch Linux and who are running into problems, who are reporting the problems, who are fixing the problems. Well, if you use a distro that is relatively rare, like you want to be cool and use something that, you know, is, you know, number 300 on distro watch or something like that, um, you're going to have a lot more problems if you actually run into something you can't solve yourself. So it's nice having a bunch of people. Now, mind you, if you told me this when I was looking for distros to install, I'd be like, I don't care if there's a about the community for a distro. I don't, I'm not a part of that, and I'm not really still part of that. I don't really care for that stuff. Um, but it does make a difference if there are lots of eyes looking at the problems at a distribution. So Arch Linux is sort of, there's nothing knocked down perfect about it, but it's right at that sort of sweet spot of, it's a minimal install for people who want a custom, uh, custom configuration. Um, and it also, even though it has that sort of I guess difficulty you have to overcome. It's also a very widely used distribution. So when you run into a genuinely problematic problem, you can get that resolved relatively easily. Um, so on my Arch Linux system, I nothing really spontaneously breaks. I think there are two things that I can remember. One happened like two years ago where something broke and I couldn't figure it out. It was just a config file that needed fixed or something like that. Um, so I'll, I'll just say Arch Linux is a, once you get it set up, uh, it's a relatively easy distribution to use, and if you're looking for making your own configuration, Arch Linux is a great place to 
uh, to serve as a platform for that. Now, I haven't even mentioned stuff like the AUR, which has a huge number of packages that you can access, you know, even very obscure things that other distributions are just not going to carry. It's nice having the AUR. It's nice, even though a lot of the stuff on the AUR can be a little shifty because it just comes from random people, more or less. Um, it's nice having it just because it allows you to test out so many different programs really quickly, just play around with whatever you want. Um, so anyway, that's about it. Uh, I just wanted to talk about this stuff generally. So again, I'm going to be putting up an Arch Linux install video relatively soon. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys next time.